Stick insects come in all shapes and sizes, but in today's video, we are dealing with the Phrygonistra Husi yentuensis, true giants of the phasmid world. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So yes, 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 I have been looking forward to rehousing these animals for ages. So the feature animal for today is the Phrygonistra Husi yentuensis. I've been putting it off for generation after generation, but it is finally time to get it done. So let me show you what they're currently in and why it is I need to move them today. So I've moved the camera over. This net here is the current home of the Phrygonistra that I keep. Now I'm not sure how many are in here. I think six or seven. Um, these are large juveniles. There is a potential mature male in there. Basically one has molted recently that looks like a different coloration, but I haven't actually opened the net since that molt, I was leaving it to harden up properly. And the problem with this net is you can really not see into it very well. As you can probably tell from here, I've put my hand through the back. I don't know how well you can see that. It's just just not very good visibility. Now what they're going into is a Reptibreeze, which is also a black meshed enclosure but the visibility is so much better and that's not the only reason. The other reason is the fact that it is a sturdy aluminium framed enclosure, meaning it's so easy and lightweight to maneuver when it comes to maintenance and feeding days. Nets are great for sticks, but not so great when you've got bramble eaters. The bramble can get caught and tear the net and it's just a nightmare. Also the bottom of the nets are slightly rounded making it really really difficult to clean them up afterwards. Like you get bits of poo and over stuck around the rims that you can easily miss out on. So what I did in this net is I left a soil based substrate to flatten out the bottom so where it's curved like this I put the soil to level it out also gives that little bit more humidity for the over. Um, we're not going to be doing that in the new enclosure because we don't have to. So you've seen the net. Let's have a look at the Reptibreeze these guys are going into. So here it is right here. Now it might look smaller than the net, but it is actually of the same height, slightly less in width. In fact, it might be a centimeter or two higher than the net. The net itself, is actually slightly taller. Bear with me, I'm probably confusing you. But where I had the net in an Alco fireplace, it was actually compressing the net to um, a little bit smaller than what this one would be. So it's actually working out around the same, except we've lost a little bit of width. But for the stability and the amount of insects we have in here, this should still do fine. There is one other size of Reptibreeze, which I would have preferred to have, but we just don't have the space here in the realm. Now, if these do reproduce, I will be selling offspring. I kept these few myself, but when the offspring come, I can only keep several within the tank, otherwise it really will become overcrowded fast. So if you're interested in this species, stay tuned to the channel and I'll let you know when the next generation will be ready to go. Now, we do need to set this tank up today. I'm gonna to show you how to set up a tank for the Phrygonistia. It's a very, very simple setup that we're going to do. So, first of all, we're gonna open the tank. Oh, I love this. I love it, love it, love it. It's gonna be hitting me though with a door. So there we go. But you can see the visibility difference, right? Look, here's my hand going behind in this one compared to the net. And if you do it over one layer, it's so easy to see through. And this is so lightweight. I'm not keeping these up here, by the way, for those with OCD. <laughs> So we actually have a solid black bottom to this enclosure. It's not mesh on the bottom, which is ideal. And we're actually just gonna line it with kitchen towel. So I'm just gonna get some and explain to you why I'm using that method in this tank. Okay, can you see me? You can see me, fantastic. So what we're gonna be doing is just ripping off. I'm gonna just guess the measurements here at two sheets at a time. And that fits perfectly 
two sheets along. We're going to do it until the bottom is covered. Now the reason I'm doing kitchen towel is because it's easy to clean up. It's easy to get rid of all the frass, which is a stick insect poo, and it's easy to collect up over, meaning I can sell or pass on some of the over for the next generation. Having a soil-based bottom, it's near impossible to find all the over for your stick insect. So bear that in mind when you're choosing how to layer the bottom of your tank. So you can see it is dead simple. Now this species require high ventilation, hence the reptibreeze, but they also need a certain amount of humidity to survive. Molting for these guys is difficult. They do need the humidity. Now, humidity is not just about moisture. It's not about the water droplets for them to drink from. It's about in the being in the air the moisture in the air so heat rises so when water evaporates it rises so we're going to be keeping the bottom of this tank sprayed down wet when it's warm it rises up for drinks they will be getting the drink through eating bramble in fresh water and the occasional mist on hot days that's all we're going to need so we're going to go and spritz this down now Just like so. And we're gonna put a little bit on the edges. There, you can see, this is where it's double layered. So it's gone almost see-through. Now we're not gonna wet this again, guys, until that dries up, which is pretty quick in the heat that we've been getting here in the UK at the moment. In winter, it will survive that bit longer. Now, the next important factor when dealing with such large phasmids is to have their food plant higher than normal now they've got molting platforms by a mesh top so they can molt from the top but they sometimes especially with this species in fact choose to often molt from branches instead so if i had bramble down to here these guys are going to molt from here and they are going to miss molt and die and we don't want that happening so i need something to raise that up so i'm going to go and have a little hunt for something now so what i've lugged over is a bucket full of limestone chipping so it's quite heavy I'm going to place it in the centre here, and there we go. You need something heavy, because as I said, these are big phasmids, and if you put something light with the pot of water with a bramble on, they could easily tip that over. This is heavy. It will do the job. It also keeps a rim here, so when any misting, the moisture falls off the drops of the leaves, it can land on here. They've got additional place to drink. So next, we need to get a suitable, again, reasonably heavy pot full of water for our bramble to go in. Now, I like the use of coffee jars. They tend to have a decent stability when they are made of glass. So we've got this one here. I'm just gonna fill this up with water and place it on the top. So there we go. Now, what was also important, if you have young in there, baby nymphs, you need to try and cover this top as much as possible, whether it's stuffing tissue between the branches or whether you're having a mesh top with holes in, whatever. But because these are too big to drown in this, well, they will be too big to drown in it with plants in, I don't have that risk. But I will be changing this up when babies are born. So, you don't need to watch me put bramble in a pot, so I'm gonna do that off the camera, and then we're gonna to cut to getting these beauties out and you can have a real good look at them. Okay, I'm gonna try and show you how I do it from a distance like this, and then the rest of them will just show you once I've got them. See, now this one has dropped. This is the one. Oh, I nearly got you, nearly got you. Yes, so this is potentially, are you mature male? This one is potentially a mature male because, oh no, because of its brown coloration. It's all right guys, these guys are used to falling from trees. <laughs> so here he is. So yeah, males do take on this brown coloration, whereas they are green prior to this. And he's got, as you can see there, the signs of a mature male abdomen. So he's either mature or he's sub-adult. I've never had very many males of these, 
to remember exactly what they were like, but I'm pretty sure he's mature. So he's actually climbing. Yes, he's going in, he's going in. No, 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 sir. In you go, please. That's it, the boy. There we go. Right, I'm gonna leave the camera on the stand facing here now and we're gonna count how many we've got left to put in here. Okay, I've got a, another one here. Oh, damn it. Where are you? Where's she gone? Anyone see? Oh, coming around here. Uh, nearly the right place, darling. Now this one, I'm looking at the ends of the abdomen, you can normally tell if they're male or female. But I'm actually struggling a bit with this species because as I've said they're normally kept in that net and I haven't been able to truly appreciate their looks. But normally you get a slight bump under the abdomen for the males. So this one has a, a slight bump, we're going to compare that with some of the others. Now females do actually have a little organ on the bottom of their abdomens allowing males to anchor point themselves for breeding so trying to work out the differences might be interesting let's get some more specimens right we've got another so this is number three i need you to cling to my hand that's it number three ever so slight protrusion on the abdomen but nothing major we really need to have a, a decent comparison one day. Oh, I'm sweating. That's three. Now this specimen, you won't be able to tell properly, has a different shape on the abdomen. I do believe that this is the female. I am totally going to need to double check this. She doesn't have the underneath protrusion yet. And the shape of it is very much different. She's also smaller and females mature later than males. Oh God, she's clinging on really well and I cannot pull her. You must never pull a stick insect guys. You pull them, you're risking them popping their legs off. I don't know where she's gone. She's climbing down my back. on my underarm. Yeah, clean onto that one. Oh. That's it, that's it, that's it. Go, go, go. Not that way, not that way. No, 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 no. That's it. So what are we on? No, you're not climbing out. We've got four in here. Look at this one. Well, you can't see properly but it's hilarious. So we're on four, I'm going to have to start pushing this lid closed. How many more we got? Right now this one's abdomen is the same as the one just now and she has definitely got a female appearance. Uh, the way her spines work, the coloration of her at this size. Yes, I would say that, that I got it right there that this will be a girl. It's a shame that we've got so many potential males in here. So what number are we on now? One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught fish alive. Okay. Now my guess was there were seven in here in my previous one. So let's see how close I was to being right. We have another smaller female just here. Oh, I locked it. Here you go, darling. Six. I've just noticed something else major in that net as well. But let me finish off these Phrygonestra and I'll tell you all about it. So now we have a number seven, potentially the last Phrygonestra in that tank. And I'll pop this one in. Here you go. All right, don't drop any legs, please. Now I'm going to just double check that there aren't any more walking around and then I'll tell you what I've just found out about that net cage. Okay, took my hoodie off, sweating. I can't see any more Phrygonistra 
but look at this you see this that is not a Phrygonistra baby that is a Phenopharo K.O.Y.N.S. baby so I did actually stop keeping this culture passed on all the adults and as I told you when you've got a soil based substrate bottom you can't find all the eggs now this is not the only one that appears to have hatched we have it won't focus properly here that is a newborn nymph of the Phenopharis kaoyensis, the giant budwing stick insect. The one I just showed you first, uh, I'm not sure where it's gone, uh, here. This one has molted probably twice. Again, I told you this is why I need to remove a net cage. We've got another one here. So, off the camera, I'm going to have to sort this out and make sure there's no Phrygonistra babies as well amongst these budwing babies and set up a new tank for these budwings. Wow. What a nightmare, eh? I mean, it's not. It's great for Project Paradise. These are a beautiful and dead easy species, prolific breeders. But uh, I was not hoping to find more when it's a culture I'd passed on. Oh, well, they are cute. Look at it. Adorable. So, we're going to get some looks at the Phrygonistra now before we end this video. And any questions about them, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. And I will try and do uh, a Phasmid Files style video on them as well so that you can get full care information. So, let's take a little look all the way over here. At our beauties. Look at that, that door is shut, folks. Look at the visibility difference. It is on the front door. I can see it beautifully. I can see the bramble beautifully. I can see the rest of them beautifully. So let's have a closer look then, ladies and gentlemen, at our Phrygonistra Husi entuensis. So you can see most of them take on this green coloration. That's the biggest female that we have here. She's still a couple of molts away from adulthood, guys. She's not even sub-adult yet, believe it or not, with that size. And then our potential more mature male, sorry, is down here feasting already. He's a hungry boy. Now we've got to hope that our bigger female can make it to maturity before he dies. Um, but we do have other males in here. So I was right about there being seven. I'm quite happy with that. But yeah, these are not beginner species, folks. But when you get serious into keeping, I highly recommend them if you've got the space. Look at them. Beautiful animals. They really are. And I've done really well with these since I learned the tactic of raising up your food plant. We haven't got a single one of these with missing limbs. Our first generation, we had a lot of missing limbs because of molting from low platforms. Oh, I'm chuffed, guys. I am chuffed. Okay, stop dancing. That's it. Get on there. That's it. So there we have it, guys. Our giants. We'll revisit these again when we get mature females so that you can re-see the true size of these as adults. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It is fun dealing with phasmids, guys. Like, I'm actually sweating. It's a hot day. I've had the light on, talking of light. I've not spat it around on me. Amateur. But yeah, it is great fun. Uh, especially if you've got uh, children or families or friends helping you out, making sure they can capture the little ones that crawl on your back. Dealing with a big one on my back's not a problem. When you've got an incy one on your back, that's when it becomes a problem to find. And now I've got a whole evening's worth of work set out for myself in dealing with the rest of that net. How many budwings are there? I tell you what, guys, comment me below how many budwings you think there are, just so I know if you've watched to the end of this video. And uh, I'll let you know who's closest. Don't win anything, but. I'll let you know who was closest anyway. Or you could maybe win a sticker if you've not had a sticker off me before or something like that. But yeah, I was not expecting to have to deal with this now. 
Anyway, so yeah, Whew, we're going to leave it there. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, to future Phasmid videos, as well as dealing with some of the other wonderful creepy crawlies within the collection. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.